Hey, Shalom. First and foremost, we're going to give all praise on the glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shah, Bahashim Rechakwadash. That's all praises to the Heavenly Father. His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. In his son's name, who the world in the call Jesus Christ, real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah. Also, give a praise on the glory unto the Hebrew Kakwadash, the Holy Spirit, which is the force and entity that makes this edification possible. I want to say Shalom to all you sincere hearted Aki and Wa'akwa, that's you brothers. And few sincere sisters make it by the living sacrifice on a daily basis in this wicked and adulterous generation. I also want to give double honors to our apostle and elders of Great Millstone, who tells his truth and who rule well. Yeah, and this morning we're, we're going to go into the book of Psalms, the 18th chapter. Right, um, we're still in it. Um, yesterday we went through verses 11 through 20. So today we're going to go through verses 21 through um, 21 through 31. All right. And, uh, you know, as always, you know, I've been you know, Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying and comforting and exhorting unto the sincere sheep of Yahweh by Shema Shah. So this is uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 18 and verse 21, picking back up. Uh, as a matter of fact, we'll start at verse 20 and then we'll read on down 21. So he says, the Lord Yahweh by Shema Shah rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanliness of my hands, hath he recompensed me. Yeah, ultimately that's done through Yahweh Shah. Right? Because as scripture says, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. See, so by believing on Yahweh Shah, you know, believing on, you know, his work that he did for us, right? By giving his body as a sacrifice, and we are to believe on that. That by default, pursuant to Romans the third chapter, and Romans the fourth chapter, and various other parts throughout the scriptures, that is what justifies us. That is what makes us righteous. So <clears throat> verse 21, he says, David says, For I have kept the ways of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, and have not wickedly departed from my power. That's right. David says, I have kept the ways of the Lord. That's right, man. Because David was a man after the Most High's own heart. You see, he did those things which was pleasing unto the Lord. Right? Unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Yeah, and even, you know, when he had his, his sins, his transgressions, you know, nonetheless, the Lord, you know, blotted them out, you see, because David's, David's mind was right towards the Lord. He had a contrite, humble mind towards his creator, man, you see. So he says, I have kept the ways of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Shah, and have not wickedly departed from my power. That's right, man, because... You know, our people are known in the scriptures to be backsliders. You know, backsliders, those are the ones that depart from Yahweh by Shema Shah. You see? And there's a great punishment for that. Right? And you lose. You lose when you depart from Yahweh by Shema Shah. Right? This is Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 19. He says, Thine own wickedness shall correct thee. Our people think that being wicked, right, selling out. You know, and, and pretty much make an alliance with this world. They think that that's going to, you know, cause them to, to benefit or come up. But no, your own wickedness is what's going to correct thee. You see, by the Lord's judgments. So he says, thine own wickedness shall correct thee and thy backslidings shall reprove thee. Let's go into this word backsliding. Give me one second. This uh, Hebrew word for backsliding is Strong's H forty eight seventy eight. Mashabah. It says turning away. See turning away, apostasy. You see, and that word apostasy, you know, of course it, you know, it's a synonym for backsliding, right? But just to go into this word apostasy, apostasy, says the abandonment or renunciation of a religious or political belief, disloyalty. Betrayal, defection, heresy, see? Disloyalty. Oh, it says faithlessness, you see? And these are things that <laughs> David did not do. David was loyal to Yahweh Bashem Shah, right? And so will the house of David be. So let's finish out in Jeremiah 2 and 13, 2 and 19. He says, thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know, therefore, and see. That it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken the Lord 
uh, Yahweh, thy power, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord, power of hosts. You see, and this is why right, we are over here in America and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Because at what point, hey, even us, we have we we backslid against Yahweh by Shemal Shah. And we see how evil and bitter it was. It's a, it, was a, it was a very, it's a bitter end, man. The Lord fed us with wormwood, you know, slavery, captivity, oppression, judgments. You see? So let's go back to Psalm chapter uh, 18 and verse 21. So he says, For I have kept the ways of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmal Shah, and have not wickedly departed from my God. That's right. Let's grab this in Psalm chapter 50. All right. Because the Lord gives us a stern warning, you know, all throughout the scriptures to not depart from him. Right? He is our life. He's our lifeline. So if we depart from him, we're only, hey, we're committing a spiritual and physical suicide, man, by departing from life in and of itself, which is Yahweh by Shemal Shah. This is Psalms 15, verse 22 in the NOT. He says, repent, right? And what does repent mean? It means to, to turn back, to feel sorry, make a change of heart, right? It says, repent, all of you who forget me, or I will tear you apart. And no one will help you. <laughs> Come on, man. You see? The Lord says, repent, all of you who forget me, man. And this is what this ministry is centered around and based upon. is repentance. Nothing less, nothing more, man. That's all the Lord wants from us is repentance. If, if you're not repenting, he's not dealing with you. You see? He, the Lord didn't call you into this thing to, to, to prosper. You know, what's in it for you? You know, to, to, to um, pretty much suit your feelings, to make you feel good. No, the Lord woke us up to the fact, right, of, of his true names, of his true character and who we are, right? And what predicament we're in and why we're in it is so we can repent. You see, if not, what did he say he's going to do? Or I will tear you apart and no one will help you, man. Yeah, the Lord knows how to tear, you know, a person apart. Mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, all types of ways, man. He's a king of terrors, you see? So, you no, know, this as scripture says, through fear of the Lord, we persuade men. You don't want to play with Yahweh by Shemal Shah, you see? So let's go back to uh, Psalm chapter 18 and verse uh, 21. As a matter of fact, now let me get, get this in Hebrews real quick. This is Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, I'm going to get it in KJV first and then the NOT. 10 to 39, he says, oh, let's see, start at verse 37. He says, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tear. Yeah, yeah, how was shy? All right, just a little while longer, All right? Even though it seems to tarry, nonetheless, yeah, how was shy? He's coming, man, All right? Let me make sure this mic is still on. Okay, good. So he says, Verse 38, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Yeah, departing, man. You see, because we're the Lord has put us on the path. He's put us on the right path by giving us this true doctrine. All right. So our prayer and plea should be every morning, every day, right around the clock is that the Lord, Baba Kasha, keep me on this path. Don't take your Holy Spirit off of me, he says. But if any man draw back, as a matter of fact, let's grab that word draw in the Hebrew. So like in the Hebrew and the Greek. Um, Strong's G, 5288. Strong's G, 5288. Hupostello. Hupostello. All right. It says to draw back, let down, lower. Yeah, because if you draw back from this truth, you know, you're going to be on a low frequency. You're on a lower <laughs> vibration, man. It says to withdraw of a timid person. It says to be timid, withdraw oneself of those who from timidity hesitate to avow what they believe. See? You're hesitant on avowing what you believe, uh, uh, avowing what you believe, and see you're not standing, you know, on that testimony. 
right? What do you? How shall I say? You know, if any, if anyone is, uh, you know, ashamed of me in this adulterous and wicked generation, well, when he comes, you know, he's going to be ashamed of you, right? In the presence of the holy angels and the heavenly Father, or well, the heavenly Father and the holy angels, man. All right, so let's go back to Hebrews ten and thirty-eight. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Yeah, but we want the Lord to have pleasure in us. So what, is, what does that entail? Us to continue to fight, man. Do everything we can possible to continue on this fight. And it all is centered around the fear of Yahweh by Shema Shah. Fear of the Lord, is the, is, that's the greatest motivator, you know, known to mankind. <laughs> you see, it has always worked. Right? We, are, we are living testimonies. Right, living proof of, you know, uh, what happens when a man fears the Lord. All right, look at Noah. You see, through Noah, we, we we came out of Noah. Why are we here today? Because that one man, right, he had the fear of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai in him. You see, and the, and the Lord preserved his spirit. He pres well, he preserved his his whole. He preserved him. You see, and his whole household. And when you read Hebrews eleven chapter. Right, it says by by faith Noah being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared that ark. You see? So Hebrews ten and thirty nine in the NLT, but we are not like those who turn away from the most high to their own destruction. That's right, because if you leave this truth, man, where are you going? You ain't going nowhere but unto destruction. Right? Yeah, and the Lord may grant you to wake up. For another month, another two months, hell, another year, two years. But nonetheless, as scripture says, he reserves the the, uh, the wicked for the day of judgment, man. You can't pull a fast one over, over on the Lord. You see? You see how long he's been letting these Edomites so-called get away? But no, he's just been preserving them, allowing them to stack sin on top of sin, man. And he's going to tear them apart. Just like he's going to do all the unfaithful of our people. Right, that turn away from him. Let's read that again. Hebrews 10 and 39 in the NLT. But we are not like those who turn away from the Most High. Yeah, the hopeful elect, right? ultimately the elect, is not going to turn away from the Most High. Once they hear this truth, they're going to be glued to it, man. Be glued to it. That's why it says that they are virgins in Revelation chapter 14. They didn't go back to any other philosophy or ideology or, you know, so it says, but we are not like those who turn away from the Most High to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls will be saved. That's right, man. We are the faithful ones. All right. So let's go back to uh, Psalm chapter 18 and verse 21. David says, for I have kept the ways of the Lord, Yahweh Bashmael Shah, and have not wickedly departed from my God, my power. Verse 22, for all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. That's right, man. Why? Because David, let's grab this in Psalms chapter 119. Psalms 119 and verse 11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, meaning in my mind. Meaning what? He meditated upon the Lord's words. Why? That I might not sin against thee. Yo, let's read it again. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You see, that's having wisdom meet you in every thought, right? You making the, the right decisions that please you. How about Shema Shah? Why? Because his word is upon your mind. His judgments are before you, right? You, you're retaining your how about Shema Shah in your knowledge, in your mind. You see, and by default, that will cause you to, you know, make the right decisions. And that's the fight being in this flesh. This flesh doesn't want to. You know, have the Lord's word in our heart. This flesh wants to have vanity, wants to have this world, wants to have the entanglements, the affairs of this life in our mind. All right. But every morning we have to mortify the flesh. All right. And, and put away the, the burdens of men, the weak nature, mortal thoughts. As second as chapter 14 goes into why. So we can have the Lord's word hidden in our hearts, man. And if the Lord's word is in your mind throughout the day. You ain't got you ain't got time to allow bullshit in your head. See? This is why particular things that people take seriously here on the earth, right? Men, the Lord, man, we don't give a damn about, you know, because why? Wow, our mind is already preoccupied. Now, let me go into that. Let me go into that word preoccupied real quick. 
preoccupied, engrossed in thought, distracted. You see, so our minds is distracted in the right way by having the truth, by having the Lord's word in it. It's engrossed in thought, meaning we're consumed with it. You see? So, oh, look at this. It says, what does it mean if a person is preoccupied? It says, if you are preoccupied, you are thinking a lot about something or someone. Yeah, just like, you know, you, you meet your new chick. She bad. You know, she's exactly to your liking, which that's very rare here in Babylon the Great. It doesn't even exist. But nonetheless, she's close to your liking. Right. And you she's she's preoccupying your thoughts, man. You're thinking about it a lot. You know, <laughs> you see, but that's how we should be with wisdom. Right. It's, it does not scripture speak about how we should be wedded unto wisdom. So this is our wife, man. This is our woman, Sophia, in the, in the Greek, man. So, you know, our mind has to be preoccupied with this woman, all right? Which this woman, she will never lead us astray, all right? And this woman will, will lead us into the favor and grace of Yahweh by Shema Hashem, man. Ultimately, salvation, all right? And we, we'll be able to look forward to all these, you know, uh, rewards, all right? If we keep, you know, wisdom, if we keep this woman in our minds, man, all right? So this is... um. Psalm chapter 18 and verse 23, he says, I was also upright before him and I have kept myself from my own iniquity. This is heavy, man. Let me, uh, let me go into this word upright because this is a different uh, Hebrew word for upright. Usually it's a uh, uh, Yashar. All right, Yashar. But this one is... um. In this verse for upright, it is Tamam, Strong's H8549. It says complete, whole, sound. It says having integrity. See? Having integrity, whole, sound. And that's where you get that word integer from. Like integer in math. All right, it's a whole number. All right, you're complete. And how can we be whole? All right, well, through the physician that makes us whole. You see, giving us that integrity to follow him, no matter, you know, what we got to go through. Job 13 and 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. See, getting that in NLT. Let's see. Let's see, is that what I want? I know there's one that's going to integrity. That's all right if I can't find it. But let me go back to that definition for uh, upright. So going back, it says, section E, it says, what is complete or entirely in accord with truth and fact. See? So David says that he was upright in mind. He says, I was also upright before him. Meaning what? David, he held that which was complete and entire in accordance with the truth. See, there's no deceit, no, you know, no, no gal within him, man. And the Lord did that, you see, because David, hey, David was moved with the fear of the Lord. All right. So uh, it says without blemish, without spot, undefiled. And we have that same chance, man. Right. By being with um, being without fault, being without blemish. By how? By the washing of the water of this word, Ephesians chapter 5 and 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See? Without blemish. That's the same word we got for uh, right, uh, upright. So this truth, this word makes us upright, not just listening to it. Now, of course, listening, you know, by, by faith coming by hearing from the most high. Faith comes by hearing of the word of the Lord, as it says in Romans the 10th chapter, but more so, right, doing what the scriptures say, right, practicing it. And we're practitioners, man, you see? We're practitioners, you know, you're supposed to put this truth into, uh, into action. James chapter 1. In verse um, 22, 
But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. See, we are called to be doers of this word. Don't, don't just listen to it. Okay, the Lord got the apostles, the elders, right, brothers, right, putting up edifying videos every day. All right, it, it, with Jake, it comes in one ear and out the other. As soon, soon as the video goes off, can't remember nothing that was just said on it. See? The Lord, hey, the Lord ain't dealing with that, man. When you listen to the Lord's truth, man, don't just listen to it, but do it. All right? I'm speaking to myself first and foremost. None of us are exempt. This flesh wants, you know, wants us to, you know, wants us to do contrary wise. That's the fight, as it says in Romans the seventh chapter. All right, but this word doer means it says a maker, a producer, an author, a performer, one who fulfills the law. See, so by doing his truth, by you know, doing the Lord's work, right, you're fulfilling the law. All right, so let's go back to Psalm chapter 18 and verse um, 23. He says, I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from my own iniquity. See, kept myself. Meaning what? Self-governance. You see? And that's the problem, man. This world doesn't have self-governance. All right? Abstinence. All right? As a matter of fact, um, we're going to go into a, you know, a lot of words on this lesson. Uh, let's see. What verse was that? 24. It's like verse 23. Kept. You go into this Hebrew word, kept. It's Shamar, Strong's H, 8104. Skip down here. It says to, um, to refrain, abstain, you see, to keep oneself from, right? And what do we abstain from? What do we uh, refrain from? What do we keep ourselves from? Is exactly what David just says. I have kept myself from mine iniquity. Now, what does that? The fear of the Lord. This is a uh, Sirach chapter one. Sirach chapter one and verse twenty one. The fear of the Lord Yahweh by Shemayahusha driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. This is Proverbs chapter sixteen and verse six. By mercy and truth, iniquity. Is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. See, so that's that's how we govern ourselves. Self governance by keeping ourselves. We keep ourselves because we fear Yahweh by Shemal Shah, man. You see, and we only win when we do that. You know, we have all these countless of, uh, of examples in the scriptures. You know, and even today, right? We, with our leaders today in these times, man, we see. Right, the, the, the benefits and the reward of fearing Yahweh Bashma Shah. Right, he gives you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He preserves your spirit. He makes you, you know, make the right decisions. He's dealing with you. He gives you confidence. Confidence in, in, in an evil, you know, unstable, wicked, dangerous world. Confidence is everything, man. But if you don't fear the Lord, He's not going to give you that confidence. Confidence only comes from Him, man. You see, because if you're confident in this world, all right, well, <laughs> you're about to suffer, man. You're already suffering. You see, many people are confident in the American dream. All right, but well, this is why people are bugging out, because they see that their confidence was, was you know, um, irresponsibly placed, you know, in, in, in the wrong thing in person. But we want that confidence, you know, in Yahweh Bashim al but that can only come by doing what pleases him, which is fearing him. You see, walking in his ways. All right. So, um, so like, I ain't know it's gonna be that loud. <laughs> Trying to light this incense, but um, in one second. All right. So this is a uh, First Corinthians chapter nine. And twenty seven. <clears throat> we'll be in KJV. All right. It says, First Corinthians nine and twenty seven. He says, "But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, 
I myself should be a castaway. Let's read it again. We're going to go into this, go into a few words. He says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. That's self-governance. You're able to bring your own human desires, you know, your, your own lusts, your own, you know, desires into subjection, meaning under authority. Under the authority of what? Under the authority and, and obedience of the scriptures. Let's go into this word uh, keep in the Greek or uh, keep under. Strong's G5299. Strong's G5299. Hupopiazo. Hupopiazo. Okay, it says to beat black and blue. <laughs> To smite so as to cause bruises and livid spots. Yeah, and that's how we should be with our flesh. Not not in the physical, but in the spiritual. Spiritually doing this every morning, man. As, as Paul says, I die daily. You know, mortify the members of your flesh, which, which are upon the earth. All right. That's keeping under. It says like a boxer, one, like a boxer, one buffets his body. And buffets pretty much means to what? To, uh, you know, to train it. You know, you see, you know, particular, uh, you know, training clips of, you know, boxers like Floyd Mayweather. or whatever. They may get the medicine ball or they may even use their own fist and, you know, beat on the abs, you know, con to condition it, bring their body into subjection. You see, to train it, you know, and to callous it up for a particular uh, for that fight, man. So that's how we should be with the flesh. Right. Right. They uh, they go without, you know, uh, eating and drinking right? particular foods. All right, not drinking alcohol, even not having sex, man. You see, you know, and you know, we're just using those examples for, you know, uh, that's that's how we should be with this flesh, man. Starve the flesh out, cause you know, once that appetite of the flesh, you know, is enraged, that's a deadly fire, man. You know, so the whole purpose with this word, of this word, is to is to is to quench the flesh. Well, you know, by pretty much putting putting the flesh out, man, starving it out. You see, it says like a boxer, one buffets his body, handle it roughly, disciplined by hardships. Yeah, and what we don't do, hey, the Lord is going to do it. All right, he's going to put those hardships in, and handle us roughly. All right, so we can learn how to, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, pretty much live through the spirit and not through the flesh. It says uh, to give one intolerable annoyance. Oh, man, to give one intolerable annoyance yeah, and you want to annoy this flesh by what by um you know living in this living in the spirit you know walking in the spirit you see what did uh what the what the lord tell paul well paul when you read i believe uh second corinthians chapter nine all right uh paul had a thorn in his flesh you know which you know there's no telling what that thorn in the flesh was Right, but pretty much that a thorn in your flesh, that's it hurts and it's annoying. You know, if you ever had ever had like a splinter, you know, or whatever in your, in your hand is you're trying to get it out, you know, you go you know, something hits it, it's, it kind of hurts. It's annoying. Right? And Paul prayed three times that the Lord takes it away. But what the Lord say, I, I ain't gonna take it away. You know, my grace is sufficient. My grace is all you need. You see? So it says to give one in, intolerable annoyance. It says to beat one out, wear one out. So yeah, that's the point on that. So let's go back to uh, Psalm chapter 18. And, and the whole purpose of that is what? For self-governance. All right, let's get one more. Sirach 27 and verse 3 says, unless a man hold himself. See, hold, holding ourselves diligently in the fear of the Lord, his house shall soon be overthrown. Right. Holding ourselves accountable, holding ourselves to the standard. Right. Self-governance. Right. Because we're not going to always have. Right. Uh, you know, men over us telling us, you know, what we should do in this situation. No. Right. Well, the Lord has given us, you know, the Holy Spirit. Right. All this edification so we can, you know, govern ourselves, man. You know, here we're about to be, you know, Abaratizah, you know, the first fruit, you know, the first fruit, you know, having that first dominion ruling over the world. All right, well, you can't govern and rule over the world if you can't rule over yourselves first and foremost. You see? So, going back to Psalm chapter 18 and verse 24. Therefore, have the Lord recompense me. Recompense means to pay back. 
There's, there's a payback coming for the wicked and for the righteous, man. All right, we're not doing all this in vain. The Lord, he's going to recompense us, man. He's going to pay us back. He's going to pay us back for, you know, uh, uh, not living after the flesh. He's going to pay us back for separating ourselves from this wicked world. You know, he's going to pay us back for, you know, uh, you know, the, the houses, the mothers, the fathers, the, the children, the wives, the lands, you know, that we walked away from in order to serve, serve him wholeheartedly, man. Like he told Peter. Let's grab that real quick. And that's the spirit because we believe right through the spirit that Peter is David. All right. So we're reading King David right here. He says that the Lord have recompensed me according to my righteousness. All right, so what did Peter ask? Matthew chapter 19 and verse uh, 27. Then answered Peter and said unto him, and he's speaking unto Yahweh Shah, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? So he's like, how, how are we going to get paid back? <laughs> you know, we, we, we forsook our whole life to, just to follow you. So what are we going to get? And Yahweh shall say unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you shall also sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, man. You see, that being a part of that governing body, right? That's a part of that reward, man. It says, And every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, for Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah's name's sake, not Jesus, not Yeshua, not Yahuwah, right? It says, but for my name's sake, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh for this ministry's sake, for truth's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. See? So there's a recompense, there's a payback coming. For the righteous and the wicked. So going back to Psalms 18 and verse 24. Therefore have the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness. Yeah. It says according to the cleanliness of my hands in his eyesight. That's what it's all about. We don't care about, you know, uh, how we look in other people's eyes. We want to be right. Right. We want to be doing what's right in the Lord's sight, man. You see, because he's the only one that can that can. Uh, no rewarders, man. You see? This is uh, Proverbs 11 and 31. It says, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. You see? Much more the wicked and the sinner. So there's a reward coming. Like Yahweh shall say in Revelation 22. It says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give unto every man according to what his work shall be. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. So, yeah, let's go back to Psalms 18, verse 25. He says, With the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful, with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. Yeah, and David was known for his mercy. All right. You look at all the mercy David had. All right. You look at all. Uh, you know, the mercy he bestowed upon, you know, uh, King Saul. All right. David was getting pursued by King Saul. And King Saul was trying to, you know, slay David, man, on multiple occasions. Chasing David in, in the wilderness, you know, sending men, sending, sending, you know, troops after him. All right. And David could have easily, you know, killed, uh, um, killed King Saul, right, when he was in the cave of Adullam. All right, but but what did David do? He showed mercy. He was like, oh, I, I'm not to touch the most house of knowing it. Do his prophets no harm, you see? So the Lord, you know, took note of that. And the Lord shows himself merciful to those who are merciful. Basically, the Lord, he uh he paid he uh he 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 matches your energy, you see. So first Maccabees chapter two. In verse 51, call to remembrance what acts, what acts our fathers did in their time. So shall you receive great honor and an everlasting name. So we are commanded to call to remembrance what our forefathers did in times past. All right. Let's skip down to verse 57. David, for being merciful, possessed the throne of an 
everlasting kingdom. You see that? <laughs> David for being merciful, man. And the Lord delights in, you know, us showing mercy. You know? Why? Because he shows us mercy. All right? If we can't show mercy unto, you know, others, how, how can we expect the Lord to show mercy to us? Now, that's talking about, you know, uh, especially, you know, those that's of the, of the uh, household of faith, man. You know? Because uh, there's going to be no mercy. Don't get it twisted. There ain't no mercy for these Edomites, man. You know? Now, of course, in these times, we're called to be, you know, living peaceful. You know, as Scripture says... uh you know, live peaceably amongst all men if if possible. So it's not like we out here, you know, causing trouble or, you know, trying to get our lick back because we understand vengeance is of the Lord anyway, man. We're called to wait up on the Lord until the day, uh, until the day that he rise up for the prey, right? But I mean, meanwhile, just leaving it to the hands of the Lord, you know? We ain't got no business out here exacting vengeance, you know, for ourselves, all right? Hey, just, just let it, just let the Lord do his thing, man. Cause you saw what he did to King Saul, right? David just left it in the hands of the Lord. You see, and the Lord dealt with King Saul, man. You see, but the Lord rewarded David for being merciful, man, not taking vengeance in his own hands when he could have easily done so. All right. Uh, let's grab this in Proverbs chapter twenty and verse twenty-eight. It says, "Mercy and truth." See, mercy and truth preserve the king. This is why David was preserved. It says, and his throne is upholden by mercy. So much to the point to where Yahweh Shah is going to come back and sit upon the throne of David, man. The throne of David is renowned. It's famous, you see, because the Lord, right, honored David because of his upright mind and his mercifulness. So, you know, and uh, that's part that's part of the traits of the elect when you read Colossians, the third chapter. All right, putting therefore, let's get that. This is Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Put on therefore as the elect of the Most High. So this is what the elect will be putting on. It says holy, which means what? Separativeness. We're not to be, you know, inter, uh, inter, interwoven with this world, which be separate. Beloved, bowels of mercies. See, bowels of mercies. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as Hamashiach forgave you so also do ye see so we're so we're supposed to forgive and be merciful just as Yahweh Shah forgave us and he's merciful unto us cuz we ain't hey, man he could have been put us to death man he could have not he could have even not even you know given us this truth All right so verse 14, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That's what makes us complete. As we was reading about that word um, uh, upright earlier, which means to uh, to be complete, you know, have an integrity. You know? And the bond of perfectness is what? Charity, man. Charity covers the multitude of sins. So let's go back to Psalms 18. In verse uh, 25, with the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure. All right, so the Lord is matching your energy, man. If you're doing right, he's going to do right by you. Right? He says, and with the froward, thou wilt show thyself froward. Froward means what? Twisted, perverted, distorted, crooked. All right, so if you crooked, if you perverse against the Lord, oh, man. <laughs> You can't outdo the Lord, man, with the mercy or with the wrath. You can't outdo the Lord. All right. Let's get this word forward. It says twisted, uh, wrestle, morally, tortuous, uh, torturous. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah. So pretty much you ain't right. <laughs> All right. So this is... um. Let's grab this in James real quick. James 2, 13, NLT. James 2 and 13, NLT. It says, there will be no mercy. It says, there will be no mercy for those who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, the most high will be merciful when he judges you. That's right, man. All right, because there's about to be a lot of judgment upon this earth. 
right? And we want, you know, the, uh, we, we want favor, man. We want mercy, right? But that's only going to come for those who's been showing mercy unto others, right? Looking over faults, looking over transgressions. If a brother, you know, rubbed you the wrong way, just look over it, man. Forget about it, you know? Because that's going to be the last thing on your mind when all hell breaks loose and judgment is breaking forth, man. How a brother made you feel. And get caught up in your feelings, man. Fuck your feelings, all right? You know, we're to, we're to be merciful unto these men that Yahweh Bashmal Shah has us around. Alright? So uh this is Psalm chapter 18 and verse 27. For thou will save the afflicted people. Yeah, who's the afflicted people? Us Israelites, man. We're afflicted. Alright? It says, For thou will save the afflicted people, but will bring down high looks, meaning proud people, man. Alright? Those that humble and contrite, which is the elect of the nation of Israel, the afflicted, right? The Lord's going to promote them. But those that are haughty and prideful, which is, you know, Esau and all these nations and even the two thirds of our people, all right? The Lord's going to bring them down. So Isaiah, it's so like not Isaiah. I was thinking about Isaiah 54. As a matter of fact, we get that. <clears throat> Let's see. That's all good. Let's uh let's just go back to Psalms 18 and kind of finish it out. Um Psalms 18 and 28. For thou will light my candle, the Lord my power will enlighten my darkness. And how's the Lord, how's he lit our candle? Is there a physical candle that was in front of us and he lit? Nah. That candle's talking about what? Our understanding, the enlightenment. You see, him enlightening our eyes, the eyes of our minds. Let's grab this in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17, that the God of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, the Father of glory, and that's a, that's a cut, you know, on people who believe in the Trinity, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the same. They're the same mind, but they're separate entities, all right? He says that the Father or the power of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, you see? So Yahweh Shah, he has a Lord. He has a master, which his master is who? Yahweh. It says, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The, and that's what spirit of prophecy, man. It says the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That's the Lord lighting our candle, man. And that's what he blessed David with. David had, man, buku wisdom. You know, as the brother uh, Karab Baez say, Buku. Man, that's, that's what the Louisiana brothers be saying, man. But nonetheless, yeah, the Lord, you know, uh, bestowed and blessed David with a lot of wisdom. You see, he lightened, you know, uh, David's candle. Right. And once again, these things that apply to David, they apply to the uh, house of David as well, man. All right. We're, we're all joint heirs with Hamashiach Yahweh You see, and we'll be fulfilling the same things, man. All right. As our leaders did, you know, starting with Yahweh Shah, right, King David. All right, so he says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. Yeah, that's why the Lord lit our candle, so we can know what the hope of the calling is. Why, why was I calling to this truth? See, so this understanding gives us, this truth gives us that understanding on why the Lord woke us up. It's so we can be, you know, uh, joint heirs with Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Right, being brought back into the commonwealth of Israel as the next chapter goes into Ephesians the second chapter. That's the that's the reason why the Lord woke us up to this truth, lit our candle, man. Give us light in this darkness, man. So he says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. See the kingdom. So going back to uh Psalms eighteen. And verse 28, for thou will light my candle, the Lord my power will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop. Yeah, David, man, he was running through right, these particular, you know, uh, bands of soldiers. Right? One one account that comes to mind is in 1 Samuel the 30th chapter. When he ran through those Amalekites, after the Amalekites pretty much, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, took took um took David and his men's, you know, wives and children and cattle and homes, you know, uh, took them into their possession, 
right? The Dave, David, he inquired of the Lord. Let's grab that real quick. Let's finish this out. First, uh, so like it, Psalms 18 and 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and my power and my God have I leaped over a wall. All right, so this is 1 Samuel 30 and verse 8. And this whole chapter is going into this account, but I'm just going to get the points. It says, and David inquired. So David's pretty much asking, you know, he was about to inquire of the Lord, you know, asking, you know, if he should. Well, let's read it. It's like it. First Samuel 30 and 8. And David inquired at the Lord, Yahweh by Shema Shah, saying, shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. All right. So the Most High answered David and said, pursue. For thou will surely overtake them. And without fail, recover all. And when you go into this chapter, man, David was going in on, on the troops of uh, these Amalekites, which are these Edomites, man. You see? As a matter of fact, um, yeah, let's get verse 17. Let's see what it says in NLT. Huh, yeah, First Samuel 30 and 17 in NLT, it says, um, let's start verse 16. So he led David to them, talking about there's a particularly Egyptian, Egyptian boy, you know, that uh, pretty much showed David where these Amalekites were. So he led David to them, and they found the Amalekites spread out across the fields, eating and drinking and dancing with joy because of the vast amount of plunder they have taken from the Philistines and the land of Judah. David and his men rushed in among them, that's him pursuing them, right, as we just read, and slaughtered them throughout the night and the entire next day until evening. None of the Amalekites except 400 young men who fled on camels. David got back everything the Amalekites had taken, and he rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, small or great, son or daughter, nor anything else that had been taken. David brought everything back. He also recovered all the flocks and herds, and his men drove them ahead of, of the other livestock. This plunder belongs to David, they said. So, see, man, hey, David ran through that troop, him and his men, and the Lord co-signed on it. You see, David asked the Lord by going to the priest, right, inquiring at the mouth of the Lord, hey, hey you know, Abba, hey, should, should I go go get my stuff back and go beat these people's ass? And the Lord said, Yeah, go. I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them into your hand. You see, so let's read this again, Psalms 18, and verse 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for the Most High, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord, Yahweh Bashemah Shah, is tried. That's right, man. The Lord's ways is perfect. Everything he does is perfect. Nothing is wrong with what the Lord does. And his word is tried, meaning it's been tested, proven to be what? Faithful. This is Psalm chapter 119 and verse 140 in the NLT. David said, your promises have been thoroughly tested. That is why I love them so much. Whew. <laughs> And this is why we have a more sure word of prophecy and we can rest assured on all these promises that's coming into us, man. All right. Just as the promises of slavery, right, and defeat was given unto us by rebelling against the Lord. Well, guess what? The promises of victory, right, that's coming as well. It says your promises have been thoroughly tested. That's why I love them so much. So let's go back to Psalms 119 and verse uh, 31. For who is power or who is the most high? Save the Lord, Yahweh, or who is a rock? Save, meaning accept our power. And the answer is nobody, man. There's no God with them. All right. Let's see. I believe there's one in Psalms 40. Let's get verse, uh, let's get Psalms 32. I'm still like in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and 39. The most I says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no power with me. I will kill. He says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See? Let's see here. So, yeah. You know, that, that, that's pretty much the point. You know, that complete Psalm chapter 18, verses uh, 21 through 31. You know, Lord willing, this was edifying to... Sincere, 
right? Uh, the hopefully let. Until next time, I want to give all praise and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, and Chakodash. I want to give the bonds to the Apostle and Elders of Great Millstone, uh, Mawaf Lababa. Shalom.